52 years ago, at this same location in the world's longest mountain range, a plane crashed straight into a mountain. Interestingly, the plane vanished right after the impact. This is the 8,900 kilometer long Andes mountain range in South America, where the only things to take in are the utter quiet and bitter cold 15,000 foot high peaks. The authorities declared the termination of the search after many days without identifying any dead bodies or plane debris. The authorities declared the search over, confirming that there were no more passengers. The news media discussed the plane disaster for the following few days, and then things gradually began to get back to normal. Approximately two and a half months after the tragedy, everybody had forgotten about it until the authorities received a message from the disappeared plane. A small, hired airplane took off from Uruguay, South America on October 12, 1972. Chile's capital, Santiago, was the destination of this airplane. The airplane was transporting a small group of rugby players. In all, 45 people went along, including several relatives and friends of the athletes. The journey from Uruguay to Santiago takes just three hours. However, along the route, travelers encounter the massive Andes Mountains. There was a thunderstorm in the mountains that day. At that moment, the pilots made the decision to spend the night in Mendoza, Argentina. On October 13th, the following day, the aircraft took off once again. The pilots made sure the weather had gotten better. The pilots begin descending the aircraft at 3.21 p.m. The aircraft was still in the mountains, but it was getting very close to Santiago. Because there are steep mountains right next to the city, there was horrible turbulence while it was descending. At this point, clouds began to form around the aircraft. The clouds were the only thing that was visible. The moment the plane came through the clouds, the pilots knew they were approaching a massive mountain. In a panic, they attempt to raise the aircraft immediately so that they can safely fly above the mountain. Sadly, though, it was already too late. As the aircraft went up, its back smacked against the mountain. The whole rear section of the aircraft broke away. With that, three passengers vanished into nowhere. The aircraft began to descend. A few seconds later, there was another crash. The aircraft's wings broke off. A few more people were thrown off the aircraft and fell to the ground. The plane crashed into a glacier, leaving only its front section intact. At a speed of 350 km per hour, until it dropped 700 meters and finally crashed. The crash destroyed everything on board and killed the pilots instantly. 33 of the 45 passengers on board were surprisingly still alive. Somehow, they had made it through this crash. There were injured survivors, but no one knew where they were. The Chilean Air Search and Rescue Service dispatched four separate aircraft within an hour of the plane going missing to search for the survivors. From twilight until dawn, they searched for the crash site, but sadly, they were unsuccessful. The plane was white in color, and it fell in an area covered in a blanket of white snow, which created difficulty. It was really hard to find amid the mountains covered with snow. The remaining travelers believed that someone would find them the next morning if they managed to spend the night there and managed to avoid the cold. That happened on October 13th. That freezing night, five wounded passengers were unable to survive it. There were just 28 survivors instead of 33. These survivors made use of the airplane's wreckage as a temporary shelter. To keep warm inside, they sealed off the back of the aircraft with seats, luggage, and snow. The next day, October 14th, 11 aircraft from Uruguay, Chile, and Argentina carried out search efforts. They selected the right search area. They were still unable to locate the crash location, though. The survivors attempted to draw an SOS on the plane's top using lipstick, 
They tried to build a massive cross in the snow using bags, hoping to be seen by search planes flying overhead. However, they quickly saw that this was ineffective. They waved their hands, screamed, and did everything they could to get the airplane to look at them, but with no luck. In this effort, another day went away. The wool in the seat coverings kept them warm, while the seat cushions served as snowshoes. They were high up on the mountain in terrible cold, of minus 30 degrees Celsius, without access to adequate food or water, but they were able to live somehow. Eight days after the accident on October 21st, search and rescue crews formally terminated their mission. In the interim, the survivors found a radio tucked away among the airplane's seats. Switching on the radio, they discovered that their search had been called off. Their hearts broke into a million pieces. Just eight chocolate bars, three tiny jam jars, a few water bottles, some dry fruits and some candy were there. When the food ran out completely on day 11, some people tried to eat portions of the aircraft. They tried to consume the leather and cotton seats. However, this only made them sicker. They came to the conclusion that their only choice in a situation like this was to eat their friends' and relatives' remains. Making the decision was not simple. Most of the people killed in this crash were friends, family and relatives. Sixteen days after the crash, on October 29th, a huge avalanche began falling from the mountaintop so quickly that it filled the wrecked plain with snow. Twelve individuals died from suffocation in the snow. There were only 16 survivors. Furthermore, the 16 survivors were found trapped in a cramped area beneath the snow. To provide some ventilation, they dug a hole in the snow with a metal rod. They dug a passageway under the snow after two days, and when they reached the surface, the sky was clear. Fifty-nine days after the plane crash on December 11th, the survivors made the effort on their own. Three of them decided to look for rescue. However, they assumed that they had to ascend the Western Mountains in order to reach any population. How could they survive in minus 30 degrees Celsius temperatures on freezing nights and still manage to sleep? Thus, they sewed multiple pieces of clothing together to create a large sleeping bag. Without any climbing equipment, these three courageous men set out to scale the frozen mountain on December 12th. If they went westward, they would ascend the mountain before descending. They continued to think that they were just a few kilometers away. So they set out to walk for a few days in the hopes of finding aid. They continued on their journey throughout the day. It became obvious to them early on the fourth day that their estimate was extremely wrong. They could see a never-ending trek in front of them. One of them made the decision to head back to the accident site in order to save food, while the other two moved on. The two survivors continued to hike up the mountain. Three hours later, when they finally reached the very top of the mountain, they could see nothing but mountains in all directions. They were able to point out two snow-free mountain ranges on the faraway western horizon. They believed they needed to continue in that direction. They hiked for several days. They eventually arrived at a valley where a river was visible to them. In this situation, it was a huge relief to reach the river. And finally, after nine days of hiking, on December 20th, across the river, they spotted a farmer on horseback across the river. They attempted to scream, but he didn't hear them because of the loud noise from the water. Nevertheless, the farmer came to see them. The farmer threw the paper and pencil over the river after tying them with a stone. They documented the whole incident on paper. After reading this text, the farmer gestured towards them to let them know he understood. After tossing an item of food across the river, he traveled westward for the next 10 hours on his horse. They were still a long way from any town or populated area. Eventually, the farmer told the army authorities about this when he arrived in the closest city. When they heard this, they were horrified and went right away to save both survivors. Throughout the previous 10 days, they trekked 61 kilometers. 
As soon as more people learned of the story, it went viral globally. The Chilean Air Force flew three helicopters to the crash location immediately to rescue the remaining survivors. In order to find the crash site and eventually locate the remaining survivors, Army commanders flew two survivors with them in a helicopter. On December 22, 1972, 70 days after the incident, the Army officers recovered all 16 survivors in all. Despite their terrible conditions, they were all able to make a full recovery. If you want to watch a more interesting real-life story, click on the video that appears on the screen. Many thanks for watching this video.